We're reading Wren, and today we're on chapter 14, The Package and Victory. In the weeks that followed, Rory grew fast, fat, and more gorgeous every day. Wren worked at developing her vocabulary so she might fairly describe him. She said he was fabulous, increasingly alert, captivating, dexterous, and utterly enchanting. One morning, Wren was feeding Rory, Daddy was dressing, and Mommy was getting breakfast. Daddy came pounding downstairs. Of all things, he shouted, Nani had her kittens in my bureau drawer, on my shirts. Mommy took Rory and Daddy picked up Wren and they ran up to the bedroom. Sure enough, four kittens. They look like mice, Karen exclaimed, so tiny, so sweet. Good girl, she said to Nani. Nani was busily washing the kittens, but she stopped to look up at them and, as if to say, aren't they lovely? Aren't you proud of me? She purred at them, telling them how happy she was. Wren stroked her, but was careful not to touch the little ones. They squeaked and nuzzled into their mother's fur. In a couple of days, her dad eyes will open, Daddy told the family, and in about two weeks, they will try to walk. He put Karen on a chair where she could sit and watch the kittens and left for work. Marie and Gloria had already gone to school, and Wren couldn't wait for them to get home. While she was thinking about how delighted they would be, there was a knock on the front door. Mummy went to open it, then Wren heard her cry, They're here! They're here! Your crutches are here! She ran over and put the box on the floor in front of Karen. Her fingers were shaking as she tore off the card and the cord and the paper. Wren sat still, staring at the box as if she were afraid it would vanish. Mummy took off the lid and there were the crutches and all their gleaming beauty. Wren gasped, they're beautiful, very beautiful, aren't they? I want to try them right away, Wren said. Right away this second, Mummy agreed and took them out of the box. She fitted them onto Wren's arms and helped her to stand up. Wren swayed and then steadied herself. Now, said Mummy, just stand for a moment or two and get the feel of them. Karen stood and then Mommy said, let's rest now, we'll try again. So Wren rested and stood and rested and stood until Mommy advised, no more for now, sweetheart. You want to show Daddy and the girls when they come home. If you get too tired, you won't do so well. There was a whimper from Rory and Mommy put the crutches beside Wren on the chair and went to see if her son was all right. He had become tangled up in his cover, so she straightened him out and started back to the bedroom. When she got to the door, she looked over to Wren and Wren wasn't in the chair. She had the crutches on and was walking. Mommy stood, unable to move. Wren took a step and another and another. Mommy was silently counting them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mommy was holding her breath. Nine, ten. Karen's face was drawn with strain and chalky white. There was perspiration on her forehead and upper lip. 11, 12, 13, 14. Wren swayed and then steadied. 15, 16. Mummy could stay still no longer. She rushed across the room and took Wren and her crutches into her arms. Mummy cried and cried. She couldn't stop. Did you see me? Did you see me? Wren was shrieking in her excitement. I can walk. I can walk all by myself. Mummy tried to stop crying. She couldn't. She was too happy. Wren said, you only cry when you're happy. I'm so glad. Marie could hardly wait for school to be out the next day. She hurried home, tossing her book bag to the kitchen table and ran out. She went from house to house to all her friends, telling them, be at our house at 3.30 this afternoon. We have a big surprise for you. Don't bring your dog today. And she dashed away. Gloria and Marie had planned carefully. At 3.30, Wren was sitting on a chair, trying to look calm, but her eyes were glittering with excitement. The crutches were leaning beside her, covered with a doll's blanket. When 14 children were assembled, Marie stood in the center of the room. They stopped their chatter and looked at her expectantly. She said, Karen has something to show you and you couldn't guess what it is. Marie pointed to the blanket. The children leaned forward, watching the blanket. All right, Wren, said Marie. Karen seized the blanket and pulled it off the crutches. The children gasped and there was an, oh, they raced across the Wren room to Wren. They're pretty, look at them shine, real leather. They were all talking at once. May I try them? May I, may I? Take it easy, mom called above the noise. You can all have a turn, but we have another surprise first. Karen clapped her hand to her mouth to keep from telling instead of doing. Are you ready, Wren? Yes, she whispered. Marie handed Karen the crutches and the children stood silent and amazed as Karen put them on. She placed the crutch tips a foot ahead of her. She bent over, she straightened up, and she took a step. A 
A great, oh, started from the children and swelled into a jubilant shout as Wren took another step. And another, Marie and Gloria walked beside her, their heads high with pride. Then their friends rushed at Karen. Marie grabbed her to keep her from being knocked down. Glow took the crutches. Mummies quietly stole from the room and left Wren to her great victory. From that day on, Mummy left many chores undone. She and Wren practiced early and late. It was, this was the best of the whole game. Just imagine, said Mummy to everyone she spoke to. The doctor thought it would take several months of practice before Wren could take a single step. Daddy, of course, was saying the same thing to everyone he met. So were Gloria and Marie. They were all so proud of their Wren. Wren had learned that when you move your right foot, you swing your left arm. And when you move your left foot, you swing your right arm. To help her remember this, Mummy tied a pink ribbon to the right crutch and left shoe and a blue ribbon to the left crutch and right shoe. So she would move the same color at the same time. While Wren was learning to walk, Rory was learning to crawl and then toddle. He had trouble with both. He was so fat, he'd just get going and he'd topple over. He'd get so mad, he'd sit and yell and yell. When no one paid any attention to his yelling, he'd stop, get up, laugh and start toddling all over again. He started talking younger than most children, Daddy said, because he was with Wren so much and she chattered all the time. The first word Rory said was Cowan. Karen was immensely pleased with this. When Mummy and Karen were playing the game on crutches, Rory would toddle along beside her, calling boo quatch, boo foot, ping quatch, ping foot, helping her to remember, to be sure, but sometimes making her laugh so hard she'd have to stop walking. Her balance wasn't good, but his was worse. He falls much more than I do, Karen would say as he tumbled beside her. And Rory was generous in his praise. Every other step Wren took, he would chant, good cow and walling, which meant walking. There was, however, one mem member of the family who didn't like the crutches. That was Shanty. He didn't trust him. He wanted his little girl on something solid, trusting to someone, something that moved. When Karen put the crutches on, he'd lie directly in front of her so she couldn't move them. He'd put his head down between his paws and whimper. She'd push a crutch tip against his side and plead with him to get out of the way. He'd refuse. Then she'd get angry and scold. He wouldn't even raise his head. Mummy and Daddy and Gloria and Marie would scold. He paid no attention whatsoever. So for months and months, every time Wren got on her crutches, her four-footed guardian angel had to be dragged away. He had to be locked in another room where he would sit and howl wildly until the game was over. There were no idle moments in Wren's days. The exercise part of the game was continued, the crutch walking, and she was busy with her friends, but most especially Rory. He could be a problem. He got into all sorts of mischief, but was so sweet she couldn't scold. He learned to climb out of his crib, and every morning, Mummy would find him curled up in bed with Karen. At long last, Shanty accepted the crutches. Then he and Karen took walks together. They went visiting. Karen caught bait, just as Daddy promised she would. She went on picnics in Vale Place. The kittens played tag in and out and around her crutches, and the bunnies nibbled on the rubber tips. I have moths in my crutches, Wren told Mom Pom, remembering the rug and the piano. I'll call the exterminator, Mom Pom replied. I think you ought to make stew of those troublesome bunnies, Daddy teased. And then all the children would yell, oh, you cruel, cruel man. How would you like to be put in a stew? Rory always yelled along with the others, though he didn't understand the joke at all. What a delectable stew our brother would make, Karen would say. There's so much fat on him. Good too, good too, Rory would agree and clap his hands.